Hello and welcome back. We are ready for our Bible study. Let's take our copy of scriptures and let's find Hosea chapter number 4. Hosea chapter number 4. And uh, we've been looking at the topic of revival and all oh, how we need revival in our nation and in our churches, in our lives, in our families. And, uh, and certainly, uh, oh, what we'll read today is a picture of our society today. And oh, how we need revival. Let's look at this. Uh, he, uh, Hosea chapter number 4. Starting in verse number 1, the Bible says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet, uh, yet let no man strive, nor reprove another, for thy people are as, uh, are as they that strive with the priest. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their heart on their iniquity. Lord, we certainly thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray that you'd grant us the wisdom we'll need and the understanding we'll need uh, to, to hear from you tonight. Lord, I pray that as this scripture applies to us and to our lives personally, oh Lord, I pray that you would help us to see it. Help us to make some real and lasting and serious decisions today that would change the course of our lives, that would change our relationship with you. Oh Lord, how we need you today. Now more than ever, we need you. And so Lord, I pray you'd meet with us in a very real and a very special way here today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. The prophet Hosea here is writing during a time when Israel is in desperate need of revival. Israel's in desperate need of revival. And you can look around. And you can see all around us, we are, the, we are in the same condition. We are desperate. We're in a desperate need for revival. When I consider just this first verse... God has a controversy, something against the inhabitants of the land. Why? Because there's no truth, there's no mercy, and there's no knowledge of God in the land. And my friends, you can look around and you can see this is a description of our society today. I, all I have to go on really is, is what I know of our country but even all over the place, no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God. I am so concerned, I'm burdened, and I'm heartbroken for our country today because of these things. Listen to this quote. Indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just. You know who made that statement? Thomas Jefferson. If Thomas Jefferson made a statement like that in the formative years of this country so long ago, how much more does it apply today when we stop and consider that God is a just God? We must consider where we are as a people. Hosea certainly would agree when he's looking at the condition of Israel. Hosea looking around saying, "My, I, I tremble when I reflect that God is a just God, when I remember that God is just. 
and God does not put up with sin, and God will God will uh, God will chasten His people, and God will judge sin. I have to look around and say, uh, "Yeah, I must agree." I have to look around and say, "I agree." When I look at our country and see God's people, God's own people, so apathetic to hear the word of God. God's own people. Or those claiming the name of Christ who have absolutely no desire to get into God's house to hear God's word. Now what we, what we have today is a group of people that call themselves Christians, but when it comes to God's word, they want to choose what God says and how it applies to them. And my friends, that's not hearing the word of the Lord. That's hearing your word. And I've, I've seen this, uh, I've, I've heard this statement so many times, people don't, people don't care what your opinion is. They don't want your opinion. What they want is their opinion to come out of your mouth. And that's so true today. Now you look at all of the discussion around the pandemic, around the lockdown, the shutdown, the close down, the reopen, and people don't really care what the truth is, and they don't care what your opinion is, they just want to hear their opinion, someone else with who holds the same opinion that they do. And that's how we are as a society right now. Unfortunately, when it comes to Christianity, a lot of Christians are the same way. I don't really want to hear what the Bible says. I just want to hear someone else who doesn't who, who holds the same view of my sin as I do. That it's acceptable. That it's not that bad. That God will forgive me. And I can just move on with my life. We're, 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 we've gone way past being concerned about sin. And now we're, we're just trying to say, I, who agrees with me? That's awful. What an awful place for our society to be. Now I want to look at this verse. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. And who's he talking to? The children of Israel. God's own people. Because uh, God has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. God's got a problem with what's going on in the, in the land. And my friends, so should we have a problem with what's going on in our country today. What's the problem? Well, look, here he mentions it. He's got a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because, number one, there was no truth. There's no truth. My friends, we live in a society today, we live in a world today, where there is no absolute truth. How did we get to that point? We got to that point by removing the truth of the word of God. We got to that point by deciding that we didn't need God's word in our society. We got to that point by saying the, the Ten Commandments are not the, are not the law that we're going to follow. In fact, it's just religion and we've got to get it out of our courtroom. Ten Commandments have no place in the courtroom. And the Ten Commandments have no place in, in any kind of government in any kind of government buildings. The Ten Commandments don't have any place. God's Word has no place in our society. When we remove God's Word from our society, there is no truth. Now, we've seen this over the last few generations, really. A removal of God's Word from our society. Both literally, literally in the courtrooms and in the schoolhouse. Taking God's word out. But we've also seen it in our churches. We've also seen it in our churches by replacing the truth with some counterfeits. We got we to gotta hear the word of the Lord. 
And when we when we take God's word, when we remove God's word, truth becomes relative. Now I've seen over the last several years, I've seen this trend where no one is allowed, if you have, hold any kind of public office at all, no one is you're not allowed to be wrong on anything. You're not allowed to make any kind of mistakes. If you come back and you and this is what I don't understand. Because to me, it makes sense. We, we, it wasn't as we expected. And so let's go back to the drawing board and let's just move forward. Let's go on. But instead, if you, do, if you do that, you come back and you say, yeah, I guess we misread that or we misunderstood it or we just anticipated the wrong thing. People stand up and say, wait a minute, are you saying you were wrong? Well, yeah, I was wrong. Then they will. Then they say, "How can you be? How can we trust you then as a leader? We're going to call for your resignation because you were wrong about this thing." My friend, this is what happens when you remove the truth, the absolute truth of the Word of God. You're relegated to listen to and to hope that man has all truth. We know how absurd it is to think that man has all truth. Oh, oh, we're in a mess. Now we're in a mess. We got to fight for God's word. We got to fight for God's word. I say, well, what does that mean? We take our Bibles out and we beat people over the head and we declare it. No. No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that we, we print Bible verses on large signs and take them out and, and stand in front of the bars and the places where the, we're you know, people are going, but, but when's the last time someone asked, what do you think? And you, and you gave them your opinion instead of giving them Bible. Here's an opportunity to share what truth is. And we've gotten away from this, but we have to get back to it. We must use God's word wherever we can. We have to. We have to. We have to. It's the only hope for our nation. It's the only hope for our country. It's the only hope for our friends. We must give them God's word. We must give them God's word. We must declare God's word whenever we can, whenever it's possible. No one cares, and I'm, I'm not saying this to be mean or, to, or, or for shock value, no one really cares what your opinion is. I know they ask for it, but they don't really care what your opinion is. They only care if you agree with them or not. So instead of giving your opinion, give the truth. Not, which is not, well, I believe, well, I think, well, start with, well, God says, and then a verse follows that. God says this in his word. It's right here. A Bible verse follows that statement. We can have this no other way. Now, I, trust me, I'm preaching to myself just as much as I am anyone else. Because I like, I want to debate with them. I want to convince somebody. I want to, to because to me it makes sense. I, I don't need for it to make sense. I need, we, we need, we need more truth. We need more of God's word. That's our only hope. That's our only way out. We'll not see nationwide revival till God's people start holding God's word in high regard. In high regard, I said. You know, sadly, even for most Christians, we don't know what God thinks. We don't know God's word. We don't know God's opinion. Because we've neglected it ourselves. We've neglected God's word just as much as anybody else. My friends, we have to get back to a place where Christians, you and I, we regard God's word higher than anything. More than anything. I want to understand what God says. I want to know the mind of God. I don't want to know the heart of God on these matters. 
we, we, we desperately need revival. But my friends, we desperately, desperately need the truth of God's word. There's no other way. There's, little, there's no other way. We can't have revival without God's word. And we have to, we have to get back to a place where we value God's word. Even as Christians. As churches. I mean, when's the last time you got up in the morning and you reached for your phone and you went to your Bible app instead of to your social media app? You went to your Bible app instead of to the news feed app. You went to your Bible app for some truth from God's word to bathe in before the day, before you face, I don't think it's any shock to any of us. We're being lied to. Lies upon lies now. We're lying to cover up the fact that we were lying to cover up the fact that we lied to cover up the fact that we were wrong. There's no truth in any of it. The numbers, they're not true. The results, they're not accurate. The plan, it's just, it's, it's false. But my friend, that's not where the hope lies. The hope lies in getting to the truth of God's word. We must. We must. Oh, if there's anything that we can do. We can at least bring the truth back to our own selves, to our own lives, to our own hearts, to our families. We got to bathe in the truth before we are ready to face the lies of the world. God has a problem with his people because number one, there's no truth. We'll get to number two, Lord willing, in the next session, all right? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. Oh, Lord, I pray you'd forgive us. Forgive us for taking it for granted. So We have so much access to your word. But we still fail in applying it to our lives and hiding it in our hearts. Oh, Lord, forgive us of that. Forgive us as a people for neglecting your word, for denying your word, for not valuing your word. Oh, Lord, help us. We need you in a desperate way. Oh, Lord, I pray that tonight, that even tonight you would, you would allow us to get back into your word, to make it real for us again. So at the end of our life, we'd say we honored you and we glorified you. Lord, we love you tonight. We pray that you'd keep us safe and healthy, that you'd keep us well. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, my friends, until next time, God bless you. Have a great day.